हे गाइस सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दिस शोल्डर कंडीशन व्हिच इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय लिमिटेशन ऑफ एक्टिव एंड पैसिव शोल्डर रेंज ऑफ मोशन देयर इज पेन एंड स्टिफनेस इन द शोल्डर जॉइंट डिक्रीज्ड ग्लेनोह्यूमरल जॉइंट स्पेस कैप्सुलर थिकनिंग एंड इवेंचुअली लॉस ऑफ फंक्शन दैट इज यू आर नॉट एबल टू कॉम योर हेयर और रीच योर पैंट्स बैक पॉक नाउ वी विल डिस्कस हाउ ऑल दिस स्टार्ट्स इट ऑल स्टार्ट्स विद पेन दैट कैन बी इदर इडियोपैथिक लाइक यू वेक अप इन द मॉर्निंग एंड फील देयर इज पेन इन द शोल्डर the joint or it may be due to minor injury inflammation of the soft tissue or immobility of the shoulder joint causes we'll discuss later because of this pain the person doesn't move his shoulder joint causing the shoulder joint capsules and ligament to thicken tighten and contraction of the capsule occurs so ultimately causing adhesions to develop in the joint causing restricted range of motion of shoulder it is more common in females after 40 years though before 40 it can also occur but frequency is higher after 40 causes of frozen shoulder causes can be idiopathic minor injuries or medical conditions like diabetes mellitus or thyroid and many other repetitive movement immobility that can be due to fracture or pain or using sling for any reason like in stroke some of the difficulties a person feels in her or his daily life are pain in reaching the back pocket combing hair bathing washing hair dressing up like pain in putting your jacket tucking in your shirt donning a belt or lifting object overhead sleeping in side lying position on the affected side adhesive capsulitis is divided into three stages stage 1 that is the freezing stage stage 2 that is the frozen stage and stage 3 that is the thawing stage but before stage 1 there is a pre freezing stage in which the patient patient describe sharp pain at the end of range of motion achy pain at rest with sleep disturbances but there is no range of motion restriction stage 1 the freezing stage aching pain in shoulder joint which is more severe at night sometimes the pain may radiate down the arm second stage that is the frozen stage pain at rest usually diminishes and there is restricted range of motion there is some amount of pain at night final stage that is the thawing stage increased glenohumeral motion painless recovery of range of motion of shoulder joint so the duration of all the stages are first stage is 3 to 6 months second stage is 3 to 18 months and third stage is 3 to 6 months the duration of each stage varies from person to person in diagnosis there is a point to note in adhesive capsulitis both active and passive range of motions are limited in impingement or posterior dislocation of shoulder joint there is restriction in active motion but passive motion can be done but in adhesive capsulitis there is restriction of passive motion also as it is mentioned the capsular pattern of restriction there is greatest restriction in external rotation then abduction and then lateral rotation but overall there is restriction in all the shoulder movement evaluation of adhesive capsulitis must include age gender occupation and history of any trauma or injury to the arm pain assessment passive and active range of motion of shoulder joint manual muscle testing of shoulder and scapular muscles posture assessment and adl assessment is also important these are some guidelines you must read pendulum exercises these helps to relieve pain for this lean over with one arm supported on bed or chair other arm that is the painful arm hanging by the side loosen it as much as you can and let gravity slowly and gently sway your arm forward and backward side to side and in circular direction in clockwise and anti clockwise towel stretch take a long towel well like a bath towel or use a long belt place the painful arm behind the back on lower side as shown in the picture hold the unaffected arm over shoulder with towel as shown grasp towel with involved hand slowly pull the towel upward with uninvolved arm until a gentle stretch is felt in the involved arm hold for a few seconds and then relax and repeat for 10 to 15 rounds 
finger walk. Let's see how to do it. Face the wall. Keep one arm distance and your hand should be straight. Reach out at the wall with elbow straight and fingertips of affected arm at the wall. Slowly walk your fingers up the wall until you feel some stretch in your arm. Hold on for few seconds then slowly lower the arm by fingers climbing down then stand sideways with your affected arm facing the wall walk up the wall with your fingertips with elbows straight and then walk down repeat these two processes for 10 rounds initially and then increase as per your endurance cross body reach you can do it in standing or sitting position. Your back should be straight while sitting. Stretch the affected arm out across the body diagonally. Bend the unaffected arm from elbow and hook it under the affected arm supporting it as shown in the picture. Hold the stretch for 10 to 20 seconds and then relax and repeat. Arm stretch. Place affected arm on a shelf about chest height or a wall. Hold on to shelf or the wall and lean your body forward until a stretch is felt in your shoulder joint. Hold for a few seconds at the end reach and then relax. In pulley exercises, we normally do shoulder flexion and abduction. Put a chair against the door and sit. Grasp the pulley handles with both hands. Pull down the pulley with good arm. This will lift your injured arm up over your head. Put it as high as you can. Hold for a few seconds and then relax. This is shoulder flexion. Now, shoulder abduction. In the same position, abduct your arm to the side stretch your arms to the side first stretch your one arm up hold for a few seconds then switch to the other side and do the same active assisted shoulder flexion and abduction clasp hands together and try to raise your arms together towards the ceiling hold at end range and then slowly move your hands down this is active assisted shoulder flexion now active assisted shoulder abduction hold a stick with both hands put the affected arm up to the side of your body by the help of your unaffected arm. Inward rotation. Fix one end of the TheraBand on the door knob and stand next to it. With your affected hand, hold the TheraBand with elbows at 90 degree angle. Pull the band to midline and hold it for a few seconds. Relax and then repeat. Outward rotation. Elbows close to the body at 90 degree angle. Hold the TheraBand or an exercise rubber band with both hands. Now slowly rotate affected arm away from the midline and stay in this position for few seconds. Relax and then repeat. Weighted pendulum exercises. These should not be done when experiencing pain in the shoulder joint. When this painful stage has passed, while doing this exercise, consider half kg water bottle for starting and then gradually increase the weight on recommendation of the therapist. The procedure for this exercise is same as pendulum exercises which I have explained earlier. Here are some points. Therapist must tell their patients in the treatment process. Apart from these, patients should not do any strengthening exercise when having inflammation of the shoulder joint. Simple pendulum Pendulum exercise will help in pain management along with other modalities and relaxation therapy. NSAIDs can be taken by consulting your doctor. Avoid aggravating factors like poor sleeping position. In the frozen stage, range of motion exercises can be started like wall climbing, stretching exercises, PNF techniques, pendulum exercises, etc. as described earlier. As this condition improves, strengthening exercises can also be started at last. Adhesive capsulitis is a self-limiting condition and almost everybody gets better and usually it does not reoccur. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe for more videos like this.